tight, 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 tight. <laughs> Blue, red, <laughs> yellow, green, whatever, <laughs> man. Just, just keep bringing me this stuff, Dr. Nelson. I, I beg your pardon? Welcome to Boing Boing, I'm Shenny Jardin, and with me is Miles O'Brien, science correspondent for the PBS NewsHour. How are you, Miles? I'm great, it's good to be here. And joining us today, a very special guest, Dr. Donna Nelson, a University of Oklahoma professor of chemistry, who is also a science advisor to our favorite TV show, the best TV show of all time, I would argue, Breaking Bad on AMC. Dr. Nelson, how are you? Oh, I'm doing great, thank you so much. And Dr. Nelson, you're at Comic-Con this year. Is this your first time ever at Comic-Con? Yes, it is. It's quite an experience. What's it like for you? Well, it's a little larger than the meetings that I'm used to. The American Chemical Society meetings are usually 20 to 25,000 people, and this one's considerably larger, about four to five times that size. Well, excellent. We're, we're so glad that you could take time out to speak with us today. Um, you know, obviously, science is an issue that's that's close to your heart, Miles. Yeah, it is. You know, I, I, I'm always imagining what it's like to have a, a real scientist there with the Comic Con crowd. It's got to be a little different than delivering scientific papers, huh? <laughs> yeah, it is. Except the people still, uh, you know, a lot of the speakers have a great deal of credibility. It's in some ways, it's quite similar. I've enjoyed it a lot. Well, Dr. Nelson, we have some questions for you. Uh, that Breaking Bad is a show uh, that's about a lot of things, but, but for us, it's about science. And there are some, some kind of like top moments for us, top chemistry moments that we'd like to walk through with you and just uh, ask you a little bit about how these moments came to be. Are, are, are you cool with that? Well, yes, I'd be happy to speak with any of the, about any of the ones that I uh, gave advice on, but if they are things that uh, other people conceived, uh, I won't be quite so comfortable discussing those. All right. Well, we'll we'll just we'll explore then. So, uh, top Breaking Bad chemistry moments. One of the one of the top for us. Uh, very early on, actually in the pilot in season one, Walt trying to kill Crazy Eight and Emilio in the Winnebago with phosphine gas. Uh, is that something that you could speak to? How, how, did, how exactly does that work? I came on on board after uh, about the fifth episode of season one. And so okay. uh, my, my contributions were in the high school chemistry scenes, the high school organic chemistry uh, teaching scenes. For example, the sorts of things that uh, they needed to write on the blackboard, how they spoke different words, exactly what was presented to the uh, students in their organic chemistry classes. And then in some of the other um, syntheses of methamphetamines, they needed to know how much of a particular uh, reagent would be needed to synthesize a certain amount of methamphetamines. And uh, they would use me to calculate, uh, to do those calculations. Those are called stoichiometric calculations. And uh, even though the DEA did most of the advising for the illicit meth lab and the illicit meth syntheses, um, I guess there were some instances in which the DEA didn't uh, provide certain information and so they turned to me for that. Oh, so, so the DEA was reluctant to tell you everything? Is that what, uh, reluctant to tell the producers everything? The DEA worked very closely with them. The DEA had uh, done uh, you know, drug busts and had seen a lot of illicit meth labs and so they uh, helped Vince considerably, uh, you know, told him exactly what the labs should look like and uh, exactly what was used in those illicit meth syntheses. Well, it's interesting to me that they came to you for the precise recipe. Why, why do you think that's important? I don't know. I didn't ask. Uh, whenever they would ask me to uh, help them out on something, I would just, uh, you know, do the best that I could. Um, in, in all instances, I remembered that they needed the information as quickly as possible, and so I would try to do these calculations uh, or answer their questions within 24 hours and get the information right back to them. 
because I know that they're working under very tight deadlines. Well, well so Donna, I know you're, you're a chemistry professor, um, but did you know how to cook meth? No, it's not anything that I was really ever interested in. So uh, the first time that they ever asked me uh, a question, which I found to be really hilarious, they asked me uh, how much methamphetamine could be synthesized from, 30, uh, from a 30 gallon drum of methylamine. And they wanted the answer in pounds. And I found that to be totally hilarious because uh, we use tiny amounts in our labs because we want to uh, minimize the waste products that have to be disposed. We want to keep the cost of our syntheses down. And so we usually work in quantities that are at the uh, milliliter scale. Uh, a milliliter is about a fifth of a teaspoon. So those are tiny, tiny amounts. Um, I don't think I've ever run a reaction using 30 gallons of anything. And so uh, this I found to be hilarious. And of course, we don't do any calculations in pounds. But uh, I did that calculation for them and got the answer back to them. Now, I don't remember exactly how much it made. It was something like uh, 270 pounds or something like that. It was a huge amount. Well, Dr. Nelson, our uh, Boing Boing's entertainment editor, editor, Jamie, asks, what makes the blue meth blue? And is it affordable to make this type of meth for your rank and file cook? Not that we're asking for personal reasons at all. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, actually, I don't know of a reason why it would be blue. I don't think that it should be blue. <laughs> I think that's just uh, sort of a trademark for them. Um, sometimes when crystals, and I have made some uh, compounds that are, are very, very, uh, that give very, very large crystals, very beautiful, large needles. And sometimes those are so pure and so large you know, they are very, very clear, and um, I guess, you know, in those instances, one might think that they had sort of a, a bluish tinge just because they're so pure and so totally devoid of character, uh, of, of all color. But um, I don't know of a reason why it should be blue. I told Vince that, too. So, so blue may be a little bit of creative license. The important thing is that it's tight, 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 tight. <laughs> Blue, red, yellow, green, whatever, man. Just bring me this stuff, Dr. Nelson. I, I beg your pardon? <laughs> we're doing a Tico. We're, we're trying to do our Tuco impression. Tuco, not Tico. <laughs> it was bad. So, um, yeah, so the color isn't really so important. What's important is the size of the crystals. The size, when crystals grow very, very large and they don't, uh, you know, they're, they're, um, they don't have, have uh, fragmentations in them. You know, it's just like one lar large solid crystal. Like you saw them get these plates. That's actually much more significant. That tells you the purity. It's interesting to me, first of all, Donna, that the, um, the people behind this wonderful program would care so much about the accuracy of the science. Did that surprise you, first of all? Well, uh, it endeared me to them. I think that's absolutely wonderful. As you can probably imagine, whenever there's uh, truly inaccurate science, I mean just ridiculously inaccurate science presented on television or in the movies, it's like fingernails on the blackboard for almost any scientist. And so uh, uh, more and more producers are trying to get the science right. For example, there's CSI that tries very hard to get the science right, except there are a lot of complaints that uh, no one can possibly solve all of those problems in 30 minutes or in an hour, you know. So there's a lot of shows that tries to do all these things by a very small number of people, a very tiny team. And so in those ways, it's not realistic. But uh, for Vince, uh, presenting this story over a, you know, a large number of weeks and months and years now, and showing how it truly does take a long time to get these things calculated and set up and, and produced, um, and also trying to get the science right. Uh, I think that uh, really endear endeared him to the scientific community. I think that there are many scientists who wish that he might have done this on a different subject, but um, 
but still to try so hard to get the science right. I think that he, sh he deserves a lot of credit for that and he has my applause. Well, now you bring up an important point because uh, on the one hand, you might say, well, th does this somehow um, put, put uh, Walt in a heroic status and might people look at this and, and want to emulate what he does, but he's such an anti-hero that I, I wonder if uh, the opposite is the case in some, in some cases. Yes, I thought about that. I actually worried about that before I uh, volunteered to uh, help with uh, the science advising on this show. Uh, but after I saw a few episodes of it, I realized uh, Vince is not glorifying the drug culture uh, in any of these episodes. It's quite the contrary, and so I became very comfortable with it at that point. And uh, a lot of people are talking about the scientific legacy that this show is leaving, but there's also another legacy that uh, hasn't been touched on so much, and that is that they're really exploring this idea of a person who is entrusted with the minds um, of our next generation, our children, who uh, should be highly ethical and highly moral, in other words, a teacher, um, and who has a PhD in science, so he should be a very highly, and, uh, highly ethical and moral scientist, uh, much, like, much like a professor. So they're exploring this concept of a person who should be among those with the highest ethics and morals, uh, you know, taking a plummet to the depths of of, uh, of, of our culture and, uh, and our ethics and morals. So it's this extreme change. And so um, I think that that opens up another thing that could be explored uh, because uh, there's a lot of um, high profile stories right now about people in academia who are sort of misbehaving. And so this is something that Vince has touched on. He's opened this door and I'll be very interested to see if the entertainment industry follows that lead and starts doing more shows about things that are going on in academia. Well, you, you brought us to an important uh, point for you. I know you personally are very interested in the, in the whole notion of encouraging young people to get involved in the STEM issues, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Do you think this program moves the needle on that front at all? Well, I think it'll make people start thinking. Uh, I hope it does, because that's always the first step. People have to start thinking and they have to start talking about it. And, and along those lines, I think Vince has been very brave to have tackled that. I mean, if you'll think about it, he's tackled two problems uh, in our society here in one show. And there's been a lot of focus on the scientific side. Now I'm waiting to see if there will be more focus open up on the academic side because uh, we could certainly uh, use some help in that area from the entertainment industry. I mean, we very desperately need to get more U.S. citizens, especially women and minorities, into science, as you just mentioned. Dr. Nelson, I wonder if during your experience at Comic-Con, uh, what have your personal interactions with fans been like? Has anybody come up to you and said, you know, I, that they, they really appreciate the accuracy of, of the science in the show or that you've maybe inspired them to pursue a career in chemistry? A anything interesting like that? Well, I haven't had anyone say that they've uh, been inspired into a career in chemistry. But um, in those instances when I've been introduced as the science advisor for Breaking Bad, and I must say I'm one of many actually, you know, uh, but when I am introduced as that, people uh, congratulate me and tell me that they think I'm doing a fantastic job and uh, I've received nothing except high praise for it and um, it's been a thrill being associated with the show. At the beginning, um, I wasn't certain that it would be. I felt like I was in a way taking a chance, but I thought that uh, my judgment told me that this was going to be something that would uh, be a positive experience and a positive contribution for science. And I think it's being proved that that was the, the case. 
I wonder if uh, people are people tend to be nicer on on in person than they are online, and I wonder if you've uh, caught any crap from science nerds on the internet, maybe in blog comments or on Twitter, uh, who are who are critical, kind of like in the way that sci-fi nerds are when uh, something in the Star Trek canon is slightly off in a prequel. Uh, you know, have, have you ever have, have have you had pedantic science nerds give you crap on the internet at any point? Absolutely not. I've, re I've received only positive uh, remarks. The only negative um, remarks I ever received were at the very beginning from uh, professional scientists uh, when they would hear that I had agreed to be a science advisor. Um, they would say something along the lines of, do you know what that show is about? We do not want scientists to be portrayed as uh, synthesizing illicit drugs. You should not be helping them. And, uh, and that's, that's a fact. Uh, and, and I just argued them down. I said, uh, this show is not going to glorify the drug culture. This is not something that's going to damage us. And, so, and I, I don't think that it has. Regardless of whether you were the advisor on it or not, what's your favorite science chemistry moment in the first four seasons? The, the one that I was most thrilled about, and, and this is very personal to me, but um, they asked me to design some stuff to go on the blackboard in the, uh, in the Alkene's nomenclature session, and, and I uh, did that, and when I saw what was when I saw that they had written on the blackboard exactly what I had drawn, that was very thrilling for me. Now that is highly personal and probably no one else will remember that, but um, that meant a lot to me to, to actually have the feeling that the students who were watching this show, um, any of them that are being taught anything about alkenes uh, in the classroom would look at that and hear him speak correct information about alkenes and see the correct structures for alkenes drawn on the blackboard and those students uh, would believe then that this is a real chemistry teacher speaking on television. So uh, that was thrilling for me to realize that I was able to make that sort of a contribution. Donna Nelson, University of Oklahoma, we thank you for your time and we can't wait to see how this final season of Breaking Bad unfolds or explodes as the case may be. <laughs> Yes. Well, thank you. I, I uh, can't wait either. I mean, uh, Vince keeps all those cards very close to his chest.